So here we have the Babix, it's a six point, full contact tremolo. Get my fingers in, tremolo. It's um, unboxificated. Now this isn't a, a how-to video on how to install these things because whoever's watching this will know just as much, if probably not more, than I do about doing this sort of thing. So I've never done this before. It's just me faffing about, trying to get it working. So what I'll do is I'll install it and then I don't cut my fingers off. I'll do a demo. Let's see if that works. Oh, hang on. Should speed this up really because it's not that interesting, is it? I don't know why people find unboxing videos so fascinating. Right. Get rid of you. Hang on, what's in here? This looks exciting. Got a present. Ooh, it's like Christmas. Whatever could it be? Oh, wait, it's. Oh, it's a present within a present. How fascinating. Uh, oh. I didn't get a present. Not like sweet water when you get a pack of. Uh, what do they call them? Candy. So here, here's the box. Yes. Nice box. The tremolo. Now I've ordered the two and one sixteenth spacing because that's what I've got. I think. My measuring has never been brilliant, but hopefully these screw holes will match up exactly with what I've got because I've got a uh, strat and this is for um, squire strats, sorry, this is for squire strats and Mexican strats with a uh, narrow string spacing, which is the distance between the middle of that screw and that screw should be two and one sixteenth of an inch, and that should match up with these. Does it? No, oh, I don't know. We'll see. The tremolo arm is nice. Just wondering what's under here. So I used to have, you know, I used to have um, Strat Contemporary Series Strat from the 80s or 86. And when you unscrewed this, you got a little Allen key at the end. I always thought that was a really good idea. That trim system was absolutely fantastic. Shame they, shame mine got nicked. And they're quite rare now. Right, so in the packet you get springs. Four springs. Everything you need uh, and more. So, that's it. Time to get the strat out and see if I get angry or not, depending on whether it's going to fit. So he's back. I've taken the strings off. I've given the fretboard some of this F1 oil. There's a demo review thing somewhere on my channel. It's good stuff. Right. I'll probably speed this up unless I can find something really interesting to say because it's going to be one. Oh no, hang on. Let's get the springs out first. I probably speeded that up because I didn't think of anything interesting to say. One thing I've noticed is that these screw heads seem a lot bigger than the ones that you're given. Uh, Time to fast forward because these screws are really long. In fact, I'm not going to bother recording this. I shall just turn it off and come back later. Bonjour. He's back, all hot and sweaty, just taking five of them things out. Last one. 
we shall see if it's messed up or not. Getting the right one. Also, the new screws are a little bit longer. I'd like to use the new ones because the ends on these might be a bit, as my dad would say, chobbled, which is never a good thing. Right, how'd you come? Oh. Is it going to line up? Beautiful! Oh, relief. Oh, good. Well, okay, I'm relaxed now. So in the packet, you get, I think it's four springs, an Allen key to adjust various parts of this, the locking for the intonation and uh, action. You plate. Well, I'm going to have to go again and put the screws in because it's going to be boring. Well, that's a relief. Phew. I think I'm going to have to lie down. We now mentioned these new screws are a little bit longer. Well, that has happened. Uh, that one's gone right through that hole. Maybe I should have stuck to the shorter ones, but I don't think it'll be a problem. It's not going really to get in the way, and don't think that middle one's going to be a problem as it's held in by five others. Yeah, ju just a little bit of info there in case you don't want to make the same mistake. Maybe it's just unique to this guitar, but don't know. So there, there's that. Anyway, it's on. Fits perfectness. And I should get the strings on, springs on first, and then strings, and do a bit of a demo. See how it works, see how it feels. But so far, pretty happy. So the bridge has been on now for a few weeks, I've had time to live with it. I think it's the only fair way to do a review. Um, you shouldn't just put it on and go, oh, this is great. Um, you have to live with it to find out the pros and cons, which I have done. Um, pros first, no, hang on. <laughs> the reason you should do this sort of thing is a great example of how not to review things. I was looking at some reviews of um, Ditto Music, the music distributor, and looking at their God awful reviews, especially about their customer service. And then you'd find some good ones. And one was a five star review, and the guy was saying how great they are, and then admitted that he hasn't actually uploaded any tracks yet. I mean, what a moron. He hasn't had to deal with their customer services. But more on that in another video. So, pros very easy to install. I've never done anything like this before. I just play the things. Um, so I just thought I'd give it a go myself. It's very easy, just take it off, reverse engineer it and put this back on. It's no different as far as installation as your standard um, bridge on a Strat. It's, it's good quality, it looks cool. I like these features where you've got this uh, Allen screw here. Uh, you undo that and it releases a mechanism in here so you can adjust your intonation with a, a screwdriver back here and when you're done you just tighten it up and it locks all of them into place so they don't move similar thing with the action on each saddle you've got two grub screws um, you have to get the right angle at first I, I presumed it would be kind of that angle and I, I couldn't get in I thought there's something wrong with this but as long as you get the right angle which is mm, <laughs> like that then it goes in fairly easily so to set your action there's a screw here that unlocks it and then the next one there's two of these screws on each saddle the next one you can adjust the height of your string and then go back to here and tighten it up and it'll lock it in place and that applies to each one of these six saddles um, stays in tune i've put some graphite on the nut with my pencil which is obviously going to help now i've never had a guitar with a floating trim without locking nuts before so I wasn't sure how well it would stay in tune but it does stay in tune so that's good cons 
this thing is too, it's too easy to, to undo. I've been playing along to a backing track. I did play along to this track three times in a row. It's about five minutes long. And after about three minutes each time, just through holding it and playing it, this would start to undo. So, you know, halfway through your track, you're having to, instead of playing and concentrating what you're doing, you have to make sure this is done up again because it just feels wrong as it's loose because then that makes everything loose there. So you have to keep tightening that up. So I think a bit of super glue would, would fix that. I can't see a reason why I'd ever want to undo it again. Um, so I think we'll just stick some super glue in there and that'll be that fixed. The other con is in this, it's a screwing bar and at this point there's a bit, can you see that bit of play there? So this bridge isn't, if I hold the bridge, there's that bit of play in the arm. And obviously that movement isn't going to affect the strings, it's not going to affect the bar too much and it won't affect the strings. So every movement you do isn't affecting the strings in the way you'd want it to because there's a bit of, bit of play there. And it, it's not too bad on chords. I mean, that sounds all right. I can feel that looseness. But if you want to do that kind of flick, flick in the bar thing with that purring, growling sound, you can hear a clunk going on there because there's movement going in, in there rather than it going straight to the bridge. You, you can still get the effect, but it's not as, you know, as, as accurate or as severe as you might want it. So what you have to do is to turn it around again point where it won't turn any further. Now if I do that you can hear the effect a lot better because there's now there's no play between the bar and the bridge and you can get much more accurate vibrato but the thing about that is now it's not really going to go past here and when you're playing it can get in your way a little bit and it's dif difficult to push it out of the way and then it gets a little bit loose here and then it tightens up again there so ideally I want it there and then while you're playing you can just nudge it out of the way but about here it, it's, it doesn't really want to move so that kind of gets in the way a little bit I'm, I've yet to find a way of getting it just right um, I'm not going to force it any further because it really doesn't want to go any further so that's another con so far I can't think of a way around that but you know you can, you can get it out of the way it just doesn't feel quite right it's just a bit too tight there um, Maybe the, a bit of use it might settle in or something, I don't know. But So that's pretty much it, I think. Um, I say, very easy to install. The effect of it sounds good. And stays nicely in tune. I shall do a demo in a bit. I shall faff about on the guitar and probably play along to a backing track. So we're on a clean setting, do some chords, put a bit of vib in, see how smooth the sound is from the bar. Switch to a overdrive type thing. I can find it. Back in a minute. Right, so now we're on a, an overdrive type channel. So we hear what the lead sounds like. Um, got some issues with the bar. I've glued that in, so that's fine. That's one problem solved. The only other problem is this the looseness of this bar. So at the moment, as you can maybe see, there's that little bit of play in the arm. 
Now, if I just turn that off a sec, see where it's loose. So if you wanted to do this kind of Steve Vai flicky, purry, growly sound, you have to have this at a point where it's firm in the bridge, because if it's not, hear that? That noise is this moving in the in the, the the bar moving in the bridge. If I move it to there, it's quite stiff there. See the difference in the sound. So if I was to do that effect here, it works quite well. But as it gets loose, it's loose there. Look. You can still hear it, it's not too bad, but it's moving around. So if you try and tighten it up, now it's even looser. Look at that. So try going round again, that's still loose there. Go around again, now we've, we're getting somewhere. That's quite nice, the effect's quite good there. That's comparable to a Floyd Rose kind of effect that you'd get. But the problem is now, <coughs> it's, it's at a point where you can't really turn it any further and it feels really stiff. So if you're trying to play and you, you want to play the top strings, because I'm one of those players who touches the uh, body of the guitar, <coughs> excuse me, as I go through, I'll just demonstrate here, as I play through the strings, my fingers come down like this. So as you get towards the higher strings, the, the bar is now in the way. It's nice and firm, but it's in the way and I can't really, you can't just push it out the way. I like the, the arm not to flop about, not to be loose, but firm, but to have the ability to move it around. That there, I'm really struggling to move it out the way. So it sounds good, and in, in, in this position, it's it's firm in there, but it's just a bit too tight. There doesn't seem to be a middle ground where it's firm, not loose, but not too tight. So you go to this point here, and it's, it's too loose now. It's too far out of the way. I'd like it about there, but it's down here. So another way you can keep sort of undoing it. Try and undo it. Sometimes it firms up as you un undo it, like there. So I've undone it a bit. And now it's quite firm. There's a bit of play. And you can move it and it stays put. But I think after a bit of use, if I just do this for a bit, it tends to get even looser. That effect there isn't exactly what I want. I can hear this clunking around. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of play there. So there doesn't seem to be a perfect sort of place or... Yeah, there it's just that little bit too tight and it won't really go any further unless you damage it. Um, so there's that. When it's in a nice position where it's firm in there, you do get a nice control over the chords. And even when it's a bit loose, if you're not trying to do that flicky Steve I type thing, let's get it a bit loose. Now it's loose there. You can still get a nice smooth vibrato with it, but for me, you know, it's moving out too far out of the way again. I don't want to have to move that far to grab the bar. And in that position again, it's it's too firm and it's too close to my fingers. Uh, let's undo it a bit. Uh, it's gone tight again. It tightens as you undo it. Weird. Still fairly in tune as well.
So you can get nice vibrato with it. It's just this problem I have, it, it's, there doesn't seem to be a perfect place. Again, too tight. So I should do some improvisation using the bar. Now I don't usually play using the bar this much, but it is to demonstrate the bar. So this isn't how I usually play. I'm going to overuse this thing like st stupid. So that's the reason that. So oh, it's so close to being really, really good. But that's the problem I've got with it. Is this, I can't find a great place to put this bar where it stays and it's not too firm, not too loose, where there's no play. And I don't want to be putting PTFE tape in there and stuff. And it's a screwing one anyway. It's going to make a right mess. It's, just, it's not going to work. I don't think you should have this issue. Um, you should just plug in and go. I, I don't know. It's so close to being really good. But I'm happy with it. Um, I don't use that Steve Vai flicky growly thing very much anyway. It's just it's one of those elements that you might need now and then. And... You don't really want to have to be turning the bar around to make sure it's firm to get that one little thing if you're in the middle of improvising. Um, so it's a bit of a shame, but yeah, generally, it, it's you can get good results. 